Hello YouTubers, Joe Kersey here on uh, Friday, September 26th there, 2014 at about 2 in the afternoon Eastern Daylight Time. Now notice the, uh, notice these fine, these fine sycamore trees here. There we go, that's a good one. Growing in my eaves troughs. They're doing quite well here. Here's the ones. There the auto stuff will get get figured it out. There it is. Okay, there they are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've got, they'll grow in the eaves troughs, but it's hard to get them to grow electively uh, down in the, uh, down in the yard. We tried to transplant some of these things here several years ago, and, uh, well, more than several years ago now, more like <clears throat> 25 years ago, and we didn't have any luck, although, there was one little tiny volunteer one down here uh, by what we call Capricorn's Rock that uh, we sort of nurtured it and it's it's turned into a magnificent tree. So, of course, that's a very wet wet part of the yard. So they they do like water, but I guess the eaves troughs then provide about the perfect environment for. Them. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, you know, we we watched the uh, uh, we did watch the uh, space launch yesterday. <laughs> Watching the launch here, guys. They're in orbit. Oh. There went that. Oh, they're back. Oh. Yeah, we're getting that. We're getting that loss of signal space, aren't we, Paul? Well, well. I knew there was one somewhere. Yeah, but but they showed a lot more of the uh, interior of the uh, crew module long after they got into orbit than they usually have done in the past. Yeah. 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 Must be a different angle of chase. I don't know. I just I think I think it all has to do with politics and nonsense. <laughs> that too. And it was my plan to uh, watch the uh, arrival of the capsule or the Soyuz at uh, the International Space Station here last night but as luck would have it and I figured this would be the way it would happen I I slipped through it but I did wake up in time to uh, well I woke up a little at a little before midnight to take a leak and and uh, I'm glad that didn't hit me. And uh, Paul was watching it on his computer. Uh, and I could have stayed around to watch the hatch opening, but I thought, nah, no, go back to sleep. So I did. Um, it's been so nice today that I finally decided to take Dr. Merle Welch's advice, the guy who's basically saved my life. And get off my, get off your dead ass. Get off my dead ass and do something. Uh, <clears throat> so I thought I'd tell you a story. Now, you've You've seen me kind of lurch around side to side and walk unsteadily on my feet. And uh, that's sort of been an underlying low-grade feature of 
the way I have been all my life. But it's been particularly marked after I had this sort of great budgeting down, probably, probably a stroke in August of 2011. <clears throat> so I, I, I lurch around, but a lot of that lurching around is due to my very small feet. Now I've got, I'm up to size nine now because your feet kind of keep growing over the years. But for the longest time I was, oh, you know, seven, seven and a half. And uh, when I was a kid, I, uh, well, they said I had, had flat feet, well, well, which I do. Now, I don't quite know what that means, despite my medical training, but I have flat feet. And uh, the pediatrician that I went to, uh, or my folks took me to, uh, before he died, he lived in a very Frank Lloyd-esque type house out in the country. Uh, basically, you know, he didn't really have an office so much as you, you went into his front hall and he had a desk at the back end of the front hall and he sort of examined you while he sat in his desk chair and then he'd, he'd run around to the back room and if you needed some meds or an injection or something, he'd come out and give you an injection. He, you know, he was a good doc. He actually was a good doc. Um, a little eccentric, maybe not quite in a nice way, but not a particularly mean way either. But, uh, he was getting on in years. Um, his wife was his assistant. And I don't know which one was the bigger piece of work, to tell you the truth. But uh, in any case, so I had these uh, flat feet. And... Uh, And as I got older, that one helped by the fact that I sort of chronically sprained my ankles and probably actually broke, broke them on a couple of occasions. Uh, but that's, that's an aside. But, so this guy says, uh, you know, the boy needs special shoes, special shoes. Uh, so apparently there was only one store in the Southwest Ohio area that sold these special shoes. And uh, it was called Swartz's. And it was down in a, one of these little tiny, very early, I mean, very early strip malls. You know, because we're talking about like 1950, Seven fifty-eight here now, and uh, just north of, or just on the edge of the northern edge of Cincinnati, Ohio. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so you know, they took me down to Schwartz's and they fitted me with these shoes, and you know, they were brown leather shoes. Now I don't, I don't recall anything particularly spectacular around about them one way or the other um, they didn't hurt when I wore them uh, I do know and it was in, it was impressed upon me numerous times that these were these were expensive as hell and I was never to do anything that was going to damage them all right Fair enough. Except we went up to Hessel, Michigan uh, uh, we were in have well, my, my dad at that time they went up to Hessel, Michigan for a week. Where where they didn't have to listen to big dirt trucks going by like that.
we stayed at a, a place, uh, oh, I can't remember the name. There were two, two sort of groups of cabins next to each other. One, I guess one was called Sorrows. That's the name of the man and the family that owned it. And then the other one was called, uh, I can't remember it now. But we stayed in Sorrows in one of the little two bedroom cabins. And my aunt and uncle, my other aunt and uncle, well, one aunt and uncle stayed in the adjacent little set of cabins. Uh, with their, uh, at that time, all three daughters, although I think maybe Joan wasn't going anymore. Maybe she'd gone to college. And then my other aunt and uncle, Aunt Sally and Uncle Frank, you know, camped out back in their little camping ground area. Uh, you know, obviously in a tent, well, you know, because basically nobody camped in a trailer then. At least, hell, you couldn't have gotten a trailer back in there anyway. So, uh, here I am, I'm five, this is, 50, this is 1957. It was, it was the last time we went across the Mackinac, you know, the Straits of Mackinac Ferry on the ferry boat because they were, they were building the Mackinac Bridge that year. Um, and it was, it was not quite finished, but the towers were up and the cables had been strung. And I remember seeing these, this bridge, you know, from the deck of the ferry as we went over and, you know, my sister was saying, we'll never, we'll never get to ride the ferry again. You know, now she was eight years old, so she was 13 and I was five. And it's true, we never did because after, you know, following year, well, one, we didn't go up the next year because my mother went back to college and so we couldn't go anywhere in the summertime. And then uh, when we did go back, I mean, it, you know, it was finished. I mean, it had been finished in 58, so we wouldn't have been able to ride the ferry the following year anyway. But <clears throat> this is all the long way around Robin's Hood barn to uh, tell you that at this re little little camping resort cabin outfit we stayed at, there was an artesian well. Now an artesian well is, as you know or can find out, is a well that basically runs continually on its own without any pump. A water well produces water continually. Now there are a lot of artesian wells around the edge of the Great Lakes simply because of the limestone formations and, and, and how the water percolates down in and go, comes back up. And uh, a number of people have these things on their property and they'll use them to, to you know, provide water for their vacation homes and so forth. Uh, and then any excess, they just channel back out into the lake, uh, which was sort of the case here. But, but there was also sort of a continual running sort of faucet. Uh, it wasn't a faucet in the sense you turned it off. It was just a pipe that ran continually, uh, which then drained down the lake. So it's basically I'm saying the same thing over again. But what it also did is it created this great puddle Uh, around the base of this wellhead, or we, we called it a pump, but it wasn't a pump. Because it's an artesian well, you don't need a pump. And, uh, well, okay, so, you know, five-year-old boy, five-and-a-half-year-old boy, pump, or not pump, continually running water source, puddle puddle. Well, I, I think you all can see what was going to happen next. I got, I got fascinated by this continually running water from this, you know, I'd never seen an artesian well before. And as, you know, my dad explained to me what it was, and I, I was just fascinated by this, and I wanted to see more of it. So I I got up and close and personal with this artesian well, and uh, I guess so my, that meant my very expensive brown leather 
corrective shoes. Also got very up and close and personal with with the mud puddle <coughs> or the puddle. It wasn't that muddy. It was just wet. Well, y'all know what happens when you get leather shoes wet. I mean, really wet. Because they shrink. It's like, it's like washing cotton clothes the first time or wool clothes the first time. They shrink. And that's what these shoes did. They shrank. So we didn't get much use out of those uh, very expensive corrective shoes. <clears throat> and, and I think that was probably the last pair of those things that they dragged me down to Schwartz's to buy and get fitted for, you know, get fitted for and buy and wear. Can't say it made any difference one way or the other because I'm still lurching around like a so-and-so. You know, you know, some days I'm better, some days are better than others. <laughs> so on that note, while we watch the Blue Jay fly around and squawk here, I'm gonna say bye-bye YouTubers.